Howdy, and welcome to Lee Reads, where I talk about the books I've been reading and enjoying lately. So I got to thinking, because later on today I am going to a book signing that I'm very excited about, more on that in the future, going to a book signing, so I'm going to be bringing home that new book, and I also bought another of this author's books for her to sign, and then I will be at a bookstore, so I may bring home even more. So I started looking at my shelves and noticing that they were getting a little bit double stacked, a little bit full. It was time to go through, prune out what I don't really want to keep and do a little bit of an unhaul. Most of them are fairly recently published as well as hardbacks. Although I love using the library and I don't like spending money on books that I wind up not wanting to keep, I have been wanting to support authors more. A huge way to do that for them is to pre-order their books. So I've been pre-ordering more books lately, as well as I recently signed up for the adult fairy loot box, which has just a, just a book in it and not any of the other stuff. So let me tell you what I am going to be taking to the secondhand bookstore. All of these are books that I enjoyed, but I don't think that I will ever read them again. And and I don't feel compelled to keep them on my shelf. The first one might be a little controversial for whatever that's worth because it is a fairly popular fantasy right now. The Shadow of the Gods by John Quinn. I read this last year when it came out. I actually did a reading vlog for it and I really enjoyed it. But I still haven't picked up the second one and I do intend to. However, I think based on some of the reviews that I've heard from other people, I would be perfectly happy picking up this copy at the library. I don't plan on rereading Shadow of the Gods before I pick up Hunger of, Hunger of the Gods. If you don't know, this is the first book in a trilogy by John Gwynn. It's an epic fantasy that is Nordic inspired where the gods used to walk among the humans and some of their offspring still do, but now the gods are gone, sort of, and there are some clan politics. And the story follows three main characters. One is a woman who is a former warrior with some other stuff going on in her past that is trying to find her son. The second is a woman who really wants to be part of this renowned reigning band, but also has a complicated history. And the third is a man who was a former thrall or slave and is trying to get revenge for his family. The next is one that I'm on the fence about because it came in my fairy loot box and it is a gorgeous book. Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. It has you know, the special bind up. It has some beautiful illustrations in the covers, uh, but I don't know that I'm going to read it again. I enjoyed it and I think it was a great seasonal read for, for the autumn, but it is standalone. It leans a lot more contemporary. I probably won't be picking it up again, so I want to give someone else a chance to read it. It doesn't need to sit on my shelf if I'm never going to touch it again. Another fun fantasy that I enjoyed the Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Bullman. This is a very humorous story. There's definitely a certain type of humor that's almost a little bit crude, but not quite over the top, but almost. It's about a thief who has gone way into debt by the Thief's Guild because they just trained him up. He really, really needs some money. He decides to rob the next person that comes along the highway. The next person that came along the highway happened to be a very experienced warrior who didn't want to let him rob her. Then they wind up as unlikely companions together to kind of fulfill this quest. So it's a quest-based story with magic and good humor. I, I would like actually to get the audiobook version of this story, but I don't think I'll read the physical book again. Another one is Kaikei by Vishnavi Patel. This is a huge book, it takes up a lot of room on the shelf and I don't think that I'm going to read it again. It is a retelling of the Indian epic Kaikei. That character in folklore is often portrayed as a villain. And in this version, she's telling her side of the story. She really is a good person trying to do her best, but her best intentions don't always turn out right. This novel spans basically her entire life. And the, I found that the pacing in some parts could be quite slow. However, if you're interested in a novel that's really quite feminist and has some interesting, the ties that bind sort of magic to it, 
this would be one that I recommend reading. It's just one that I don't think I'll read again. Last, well, almost last, I have The Hacienda. This is a spooky, gothic story about a woman who decides to get married for her own sort of self-protection and she goes to live in her at her husband's remote hacienda which is haunted and is quite vengeful and she decides to enlist the help of one of the local priests who happens to be a witch to exercise the house and figure out what's going on with it it was quite fun to read if you're in the mood for something gothic but a little bit different this one is a good pick for you then last i have some books that my dad gave me to read and i did try i did try them but they're just not my style they're going to the half price bookstore where someone else will definitely buy these because that's where my dad got them tom clancy's chain of command and the book that comes right after it i think zero hour uh, so what my dad always does is he gets the most recent tom clancy from half price books he reads it and then he resells it and he gets the next one and the cycle continues so i will just be continuing that cycle on his behalf yeah so i have quite a haul of hardbacks to bring to half price books freed up some room on my shelf for new arrivals everything looks a little bit less cluttered which i enjoy and on top of that i may be able to get a little bit of store credit towards something new to me thank you so much for watching have you read any of the books that i unhauled today and am i making a mistake let me know because i won't be going to the bookstore for a couple of days i think there's time to salvage the situation if needed i hope that i'll be able to get some footage from the book signing and bring you along with me for that but until then don't forget to support your local library and your friendly local bookshops thanks